The headline caught my eye. This man has spent $350,000 preparing for the apocalypse. According to the article, some guy had taken his life savings and built a bunker in the middle of Melbourne so he could survive the year 2012. The doomsday that never came. Sure, it sounded ridiculous, crazy even, and that's why I wanted to meet him. My name's Robert Best. I am a survivalist. I started out from studying the year 2012. Just about all of the 2012ers who are proclaiming doom and gloom was coming have disappeared, or they've moved on to other things. I thought it'd be interesting just to be like the last 2012er out there. I've put a fair amount of thought into the likelihoods of different scenarios happening. Global pandemic, nuclear war, a massive solar storm, super volcano. Very few people take the idea of a global disaster seriously. People literally put their hands over the ears and say, you know, I don't want to hear about it. The 2012 doomsday meme was original, it was special, it was a one-off. There's never going to be anything like it again. Robert Bast isn't anything like the catchy headline would suggest. He doesn't live in an underground bomb shelter surrounded by tin cans. Actually, he lives with his family in an average home. The reasons he chose to move his family there are perhaps less average. There are many different aspects to finding a safe spot or a safe location to survive a, a disaster. Uh, everyone's got their own personal opinion. Uh, mine were focused on getting away from society. Being away from the coast, because a, a tsunami has its obvious dangers, but also not too remote. You, you want to be able to perhaps scavenge from a, a regional centre if there's not many people left. What's really good about the spot we chose is that it's a holiday resort. It's a golf course. You're all right. And we've got uh, a lake right next to us, which is a permanent supply of fresh water. So. We're not, we're not going to run out of water, that's for sure. I love the idea of getting back to nature, but personally I'm not that suited to it. <laughs> I'm more of a computer geek and I'm not, I'm not a handyman at all. I started the Survive 2012 website because there was no information online about 2012. Because it was the first 2012 website, it became a go-to place for 2012 information. Most people were really appreciative of the information I put on my websites, but I did get a few angry people. I got a few death threats, even. People that were upset that I was scaring children or telling lies. I understand why people get upset. Uh, they're, they're scared of talking about the end of the world. Just like lots of people can't talk about dying in general, just dying from old age. It uh, scares people. They, they don't like talking about it, don't like thinking about it. They would prefer just to um, ignore the possibilities. Being a survivalist can be pretty lonely. Most survivalists don't have friends, family or even partners that are interested in what they are. I was really lucky that I met my wife after I started studying 2012. So within the first week when it looked like it was going to be a serious relationship, I told her, I said, come 2012, you know, I might be doing some crazy stuff, just letting you know. My wife understands the common sense of storing food just in case, but she thinks more in terms of months rather than years. This store doesn't sell spam, but this is the same sort of thing lasts forever. It's good protein. In the last few years there's been quite a number of survivalists who have appeared on TV in documentaries. The ones that go on TV generally are idiots because anyone who knows them knows all the stuff they've got. They know where that person lives and in the event of a disaster they'll be queuing up at your door wanting some of your supplies. Most Australians eat pasta quite regularly. There's no reason why you can't buy a whole box of it at a time. You'll get through it. The best survivalists are the ones you've never heard of. 
The ones that never tell you you're a survivalist, they don't even tell friends and family what they're doing. Water is incredibly important. Two of these cost eight bucks. Last night out for a week. I've got strategies in place and supplies, but I don't share with people where they are or precisely what they are. Feel free to come to my house in the event of a disaster because my stuff isn't here. Obviously nothing bad happened in 2012, but it was a very strange situation to be in because for a long time I'd been discussing 2012 and a tiny part of me was like, I'd love to be proven right. But clearly I didn't want anyone to die. <laughs> so yeah, I'm happy nothing bad happened. I love the serenity out here. It's just so peaceful. But if bad guys were after my survival supplies, I could pick them off from here. Nah, just joking. What does it take to cling to the idea of the 2012 apocalypse when it's already the year 2014? Post-2012, I've cut back on most of my online activities regarding survivalism and concentrated on my own personal preparations. Yeah, I spend several hours a day still researching uh, doomsday related stuff. If a comet crashes into our planet next year, I'd count that as something that the Mayans predicted. I didn't seek the end of the world. I'm not you know, a goth or a whatever else they're called these days. I'm not seeking a reason to be morose or morbid. I just happen to not be able to discount the idea. Like Robert says, 2012 was an incredible meme, and it's sometimes easier to latch on to a captivating headline and ignore the truth around it. Do we deserve to be here? I don't know. I mean, I don't think we've done anything especially good to the planet since we've been civilised. But does it mean we need to be punished for the bad things we've done? I don't think so either. I think it's just to throw the dice whether we're around or not.